that is one of my objectives. Each time I put an episode out there, I make sure to ask the guests their links and, and their presence online. And there hasn't been one guest who has said, oh no, I'd rather people not reach out to me. They can be the start of this exploration into networking for sure. This is David Mendes. You may recognize his voice, and most of you may have only seen this icon. That's right. We have Papa PhD podcast to take a coffee with us today. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time today. I'm delighted to have Papa PhD David Mende with us today. Hi, Vera. I'm super happy to be here in this uh, almost impromptu meeting and catch up between uh, you and I. It's a bit of a surprise in a way, and I'm eager to know what questions you have for me, and I hope I'm going to be able to bring some value to your audience. Don't be shy. So it's just a coffee chat, and <laughs> yeah. There we go. So yeah, it's just a casual coffee chat and mm -hmm. it's more organic ideas that comes in my mind. Because I know that your podcast has been just over one and a half year. Yep. Almost reaching a hundred episodes, almost. <laughs> As the Papa of PhD. <laughs> I, I love the name, by the way. I have to start with a quote by my friend, Natalia. She wrote this book, What's Out There For Me? And I remember she said that hits me so much. PhD are like stem cells. A lot of us that gone through the research training, we still don't know what we wanted to do. And we have to explore not only externally, but also internally to find out what works best for us in a professional setting. So that links to you because you interview so many PhD. How do you feel about this statement? I feel it's a great statement. It's funny. Usually the one I use is that we're like Swiss army knives. That, but but the stem cells, especially for me coming from, from cell biology, it's just, it's actually really, really good. <laughs> and uh, by the way, Natalia Bielcik has been on the show and she's one of these people who has, you know, come from her PhD and turned herself into a completely different career. She's on episode 79 of Papa PhD. She has worked a lot to also through interviews with people, but she has written this, this book. She's done a lot of work of thinking about this question of getting PhDs to find fulfilling careers if, if and when they go out of academia. But in all the conversations that I've had, there's a theme that's behind all of the conversations, which is exactly what you said, is that once you come out of a PhD, yes, you're very specialized in terms of the subject you worked for your thesis, but your skill set has been very diverse in a sense that you can use it, the skills that you develop of uh, analysis, of data collection, of data treatment can be of use in so many different domains, be it in business, be it in finance, be it in, in R&D at different levels, that I think the, the, the image of being stem cells is uh, pluripotent stem cells is a really, really good one. I really love it. <laughs> In terms of stem cells, mm -hmm. would you like to highlight some of the few popular differentiation process? Mm -hmm. Differentiation <laughs> process. I mean, if if I I mean for those who have never met David and Papa PhD, how would you encourage beginner who want to listen to your podcast? Which are the podcasts they should bookmark and why? Mm -hmm. If they're having this question of stem cells, like I wanted to mm -hmm. find out mm -hmm. what I'm good at and what I can do. Actually, this is a very good question, and it's really cool that you ask it now versus a few weeks ago, because I just did the work of collating collections of episodes that I call starter packs that help people start navigating the collection of interviews that are in Papa PhD. They're kind of indicative of what different domains people come from that are on the show. The first starter pack is academia and adjacent. Some people that I've interviewed are, are professors and, and uh, are, are on tenure track, but also do other things like science outreach. But there's also people who work in, in universities, but not uh, not uh, as a professor, they're career, uh, you know, career specialists or, or career career department heads or, or things like that in universities. That's another way to stay adjacent to academia. Then the other starter pack is business and entrepreneurship. I've had people who are in finance, who are, you know, working in companies. They had a PhD in the life sciences, and they're now helping uh, finance companies understand well, the value of startups and, and things like that for their clients. But also recently, 
uh, people who actually have started startup incubators and things like that, and they are leveraging their know-how from having done a PhD towards that activity of also picking out and selecting companies, uh, startups, to push them towards a higher plane. So that would be startup pack number two. Then there's another one that is coaching. I think you'll confirm a lot of the people who find ways to, or find new careers after the PhD that are quite different, they often like to come back and help people who are in graduate school or coming out of graduate school. And uh, so a lot of them are coaches or at, include coaching as part of their, uh, their activity and their vocation. The other one, the next starter pack is, I call it community building. And you are in that one. Kind of as an echo to what I just said of wanting to help, some of the people that I've interviewed after their PhD have uh, really made an effort to try and create communities around helping graduate students, be it in terms of mental health or in terms of just going through graduate school like what you do or in terms of figuring out their career. Then another one that, especially if you come from life sciences or from STEM fields in general, is industry. So a lot of people actually go and become research scientists, and so they do R&D in industry. It could be in you know, chemistry, it can be in pharmaceutical. So those are already a few paths in differentiation. Then one that's very popular, and I, I get asked a lot about outside the podcast, in LinkedIn, etc., is uh, actually science communication and medical communications, like what you are doing now, Vera. So a lot of people, because there's so much time spent during your PhD, reading up literature, uh, digesting it, and then eventually writing a thesis and articles based on it, that a very logical and a fairly simple path of differentiation to, to keep the simile is go and find places where your writing and your communication skills are going to be the ones that you're going to leverage, but accompanied with your scientific culture. So there's the medical communications and the science communication starter packs that I kind of differentiated. There's another one that I put in there, and it's not so much a path after PhD, but it's just something that has come up in many conversations. And it's a starter pack about mental health. A lot of the guests have gone through mental health issues during their PhD, during their passage through graduate school. And it is well known now that graduate students in general are a population that have a higher incidents of mental health issues. And that's why I included it there. But that is not so much a differentiation path. Although like Megan Kirk Chang, she actually is doing a PhD in psychology. And one of the things she does is coach people to deal with trauma. So I think it kind of is one path too. I listened to Megan's podcast um, actually just on my way home <laughs> and mm -hmm. I can resonate with this trauma accumulated in the low intensity level over a mm -hmm. long period of time. In PhD. Yeah. And one thing I resonate a lot is the unpredictable outcome. It's like COVID, we don't have a predictable outcome at this point and a lot of people feel stressed. But during PhD, it's almost like we have four, six years of COVID yeah. <laughs> and we all yeah, stay home it. and we do our own like we stay by ourselves because we have to isolate ourselves to do work mm -hmm. and finish and graduate yeah. and the unpredictable outcome is really traumatizing yeah not knowing until almost the end you know what's going to happen it can be traumatizing yeah Thank you for summarizing all of these paths because that is the first question was the what are out there and mm -hmm. these are wonderful resources. I know I will have plenty of time taking notes and making the <laughs> animation. I do have a remark about how to differentiate. Mm -hmm. So stem cells can be influenced by the cells around them and they mm -hmm. will differentiate eventually in the same type of cells. Yeah. This is interesting observation because it's like us when we are surrounded by medical writers. I've spoken mm -hmm. to many of them then I think oh, yeah. I'm, like, I'm interested and I wanted to start. What would be the advice for people who want to find their dream job, the so-called dream role after PhD? <laughs> and use the best talent. It's amazing how this metaphor is really working throughout this whole conversation because yes, different stem cells do respond to their environment to find the cues that bring them to whichever type of cell they're going to differentiate. Also, they respond temporarily. They may stay quiescent for a while and then 
at a certain point, there's a cue that tells them, okay, this is the time to choose your path. But let's stick with what you said, which is cells, getting cues from cells around them to know what they should differentiate it into. And it's fairly simple, actually, to find what the advice is to, to relate to that, which is surround yourself with people doing things that you find interesting, that you find cool, and that you see yourself doing. And how do you do this? It's through networking, not transactional networking. You know, I'm going to meet you. You're going to tell me things that uh, get, lead me to my job. No, start conversations with these people, with these other cells that are already doing things that you feel that you thrive in. And I say this, you and I are both on LinkedIn. We met through there. And for me, it's the platform right now to, to do that. One thing I wanted to mention if you do want to go back to listen to the starter packs that I mentioned, just go to papaphd.com forward slash start and you'll see them all there. There's a few in French too that you find that you find more at the, at the bottom of the list, but I just wanted to mention that there. But yeah, go have conversations with people whose position looks like what you perceive now as being your dream job or as close as that as possible. And they will first tell you maybe probably their, their story and how they got there. They'll probably tell you what training you need to get or, or who you need to talk to to start moving towards that objective. And then eventually, you know, they'll be part of your network. Some of them can become friends. But the idea is after a conversation, they can also show you that, okay, I kind of had idealized this position. This is really not exactly for me. But I, I'm glad I, I spoke with this person. This is very helpful because I was about to pitch the idea of surrounding yourself with people that are doing what you wanted to do. The very first step would be listening to Papa PhD podcast. <laughs> <laughs> because surrounding yourself in proximity to people, it doesn't mean you have coffee, dinner with these people all the time. It just means you surround yourself with content and resources that are resonating in that environment. And I need to thank you for taking the time for the last almost two years to put all this together available online because it is on demand anytime when they wanted to hear when they wanted to kill time on the bus they can listen to your podcast and network with people because most of these people are on LinkedIn and yes. they are responsive like I am responsive I was interviewed by you and people come to me all the time and say I listen to Papa PhD and I'd like to connect and that's that's really good to know because that is one of my objectives. Each time I put an episode out there, I make sure to ask the guests their links and their presence online. And there hasn't been one guest who has said, oh, no, I'd rather people not reach out to me. They can be the start of this exploration into networking for sure. Thanks so much for mentioning that. Oh, thanks so much for letting me be an interview during my most vulnerable time, because that was a moment that a lot of people actually gave help and suggestion. And later on, there are people who realize I have a job and then they come to me and ask for advice. And I think it's a pay it forward. Yeah momentum that I'm really loving this. One thing about small community, because we're PhD and there are by default not many of us, and I see ourselves like we are indie musician or indie artist <laughs> in the mm -hmm. band. So I never complain about my video having a low view count or a small number of subscribers because I am quite encouraged to know that people are free to talk to each other. And there are a lot of people who would comment on each other's question, even on my YouTube channel, and they will fix each other's problem or oh, question wow. about submitting <laughs> uh, to a bad reviewer, what to do. This is what I wish that PhD could be and building community, like you are also doing the building community part. It's a pleasure to bring you on over a coffee break. I hope you guys are having a coffee with David and I now and get to know more about resources that are available for you as a PhD student. Mm -hmm. And mm. so never try to take coffee by yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it, it, I'm, I'm really happy. Uh, actually, I, I just finished my coffee, but that, that's, that's the detail. No, I, I really think that... Uh, resources like what you do and like what's on Papa PhD, you know, it wasn't that easy to find them when I was doing my PhD 11 years ago and more. I think there's more and more of them out there. And I think people should make use of them. And if someone comes on a podcast and shares their story, and if that story resonates with you, if you feel that you have questions or that you'd like to reach out to the person, do it. They'll be flattered. You know, also you need to you know, to, to be courteous, etc. But they'll be flattered, they'll be happy to help you. 
And it's, it's going to be a lost opportunity if you start thinking, oh, but I'm going to be uh, annoying them or feeling afraid or shy about it. Forget about that and just reach out. If people are busy, they'll tell you. And if people are extremely busy, they might not answer you. But I have to tell you, like this community, and you know it, Vera, the PhD community on LinkedIn, everyone is so nice and everyone wants to help so much that um, you're sure to get some response from these people. Okay, David, thank you so much today for sharing the coffee break with our audience with PhD Coffee Time. If our audience wanted to reach out to you, how can they find you? They can reach out on Twitter or Instagram. It's the same handle. It's at Papa PhD Podcast. If they look for David Mendes on LinkedIn, I'm pretty responsive and I'll be happy to answer to any of your questions. In closing remarks, if someone wanted to be featured on Papa PhD, is there a long line? <laughs> how, can, <laughs> how can they reach out? And what are the mechanisms? Actually, on LinkedIn, them? it's really the best because it's dynamic and then it's easy to, for you guys to see who I am, for me to see who you are. If there's a match, I'll send you an email and, and then it's going to lead you to my booking page. Just just reach out. If Also, I must say, maybe if you don't want to, but you know someone who you think would be really cool to be on the show, same thing, reach out and give me that name and I'll check them out. Wonderful. So guys, make sure to reach out to David and provide all your best connection on LinkedIn and PhD alumni because they could be featured on our next podcast, on, on his next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like I'm running a podcast now. <laughs> no, it's fine. You've been on the podcast. So. <laughs> and that will pay the story because I think a story amplifies. And when it's a wonderful story, it inspires and it makes everyone to be a better version of ourselves, which is beautiful. So Definitely. thank you again. Thank you, Vera. This was great. I had a great time having this intercontinental coffee time with you. Thank you. 